Hello everyone. Over the past six months, quite a few of my new subscribers asked me to share some tips and tricks on how I prepare and produce my videos. I once did a video on my camera gear, but it's over a year old and the focus was mainly on the technical aspects of my setup. So my last video in 2011 will be a view behind the scenes of how I make my videos, especially my tabletop reviews. One word of warning though, I'm no expert in cameras or videography, so don't take my word for it. I'm a self-taught hobbyist, like many other reviewers here on YouTube. I can only share what works for me. Now, a lot of people still think that the production quality of a video mainly depends on the camera. This is only true to a small extent. The quality of the camera contributes, I would guess, 25% to the final result. What you see here are my secret weapons. This is a script and this is a daylight bulb. Both are key for the type of videos I make. A decent lighting is far more important than a feature loaded camera or editing software. And I prefer to work with an audio script in order to give my reviews a structure and to keep myself on topic. Speaking of structure, let me walk you through the whole process from start to finish. Research sounds like a big word for this kind of work, but I have watched knife reviews where the reviewer wasn't even able to remember the name of the knife designer. So my first step is to collect all the available information on the item that I'm going to review. Also, I try to find out the correct pronunciation of names. Of course, the scope of this research may vary. In the most simple case, let's say I want to do a review on a Maxpedition pouch. In this case, I just watch some of the existing videos in order to get an idea of what I should focus on in my own review. However, when I did my review series on case knives, I did a lot of historical research. Besides Wikipedia, there is another excellent informational resource on the web archive.org. I found some very interesting historical footage here. Also, archive.org is great for background music because many music pieces are available under a Creative Commons license. I always write audio scripts before I start filming. I do this for two reasons. First, as you all can hear, English is not my native language and it's easier for me to read the text from a sheet of paper instead of improvising my words. Writing a script is also a great way to avoid those annoying filler sounds. But even if I did my reviews in German, I would probably write my text before recording it. I don't say that you have to do it this way. If you are a talented speaker or presenter, just switch on the camera and start talking. I admire those people. Unfortunately, I don't have this gift. I really depend on my audio scripts. Now, the second reason is probably more important. My goal is to do my reviews in an organized way. It's not always the same way. I like variation, but hopefully it's always an entertaining way. For example, I do not use a channel intro. Instead, I try to come up with an intro that is appropriate for the item that I'm reviewing. Also, I try to come up with a logical structure for my reviews with all the important points in it. And since I can't remember anything beyond five minutes, I write the steps down. Now for the camera and lighting setup. My video camera is a Canon Legria HF200, a mid-range consumer camcorder. It's not the cheapest camera, but it's not really expensive either. I added a Canon DM100 shotgun microphone for a better sound. Plus, I bought this wide angle lens, which is great for filming panoramic shots. But it's definitely not needed for simple tabletop reviews. By the way, the Canon Legria HF200 is no longer available, but actually the brand and model are not that important. There are equally good cameras from Canon, Sony, Panasonic and other brands. You really don't need to spend a whole lot of money on a camera. HD capable cameras have become really affordable within the last two years. Take the money you save on the camera and spend it on some accessories, or even more important, spend it on a decent lighting setup. 
A lot of YouTube reviews could be so much better if the lighting didn't suck. Especially when reviewing dark or black items like this pouch, you need a decent lighting setup. Otherwise, the only thing your viewers will see is a black hole. And again, you don't need to spend a fortune in order to get some decent results. Right now, while I'm filming this, I'm using this set of daylight lamps. I bought it here in Germany and it costs a bit over 100 euro, but it makes a huge difference in terms of the video quality. The bulbs have a color temperature of 5500 Kelvin, which represents daylight balanced light. I've been using these lamps for all my tabletop reviews over the past one and a half years. While these lamps work great for small items like knives and pouches, they are limited when it comes to larger items like backpacks or travel bags. That's why I recently upgraded my lighting capabilities with two softboxes. Again, I bought the least expensive ones that I could find, but the results are pretty decent. I used these softboxes when I did my reviews on the Maxpedition Sitka and the Maxpedition MPB. And before you ask, no, I have no idea where you can get these lamps and softboxes in Finland, Australia or in the United States. The actual filming is the easiest part. I only need to read the text from the sheet of paper in front of me and let it sound as if it was spoken naturally and not pre-written. Of course, my accent limits my efforts, but at least I try very hard. I usually film each section of my script separately. If I make a mistake, I only have to go back to the beginning of the last section instead of redoing everything from scratch. Later, the bits and pieces are put together in editing. The only thing I need to spend some thought on is when to do what with my hands, especially when reviewing bags or pouches. It always drives me crazy when I want to open a zipper pocket and it's already open and I have to start over. Editing my videos is what I like most. It's the part of the process where I can get really creative. Now, again, a lot of people think that you need some fancy software in order to get impressive results. No, you don't, unless you really want to do some crazy video effects. I work on a Windows PC and I use an old version of a 100 euro software. It's called Video Deluxe from Magix and it does everything I need. I guess I could get the same results with Adobe Premiere Elements or any other video editing software in this price range. Also, if you are completely new to video editing, a software with less features is a lot easier to learn. I always render my videos to MP4 and 720p. I could also render to 1080p, but in my opinion it's not worth the extra time that you have to wait for the rendering to finish. Also, it takes longer to upload the videos. Whatever software you use, you probably will have to play around with different export settings in order to get the best results. I cannot give you any tips here because each software is a little different. It's a bit of a trial and error process. Finally, let me point out that there is no correlation whatsoever between the production quality of your videos and your subscriber count. My way of making videos will not automatically get you more subscribers. <laughs> Let me be very clear on this so you are not disappointed. What I've told you is just my preferred way of doing videos. There are lots of channels out there with low quality videos and 10 times the number of subscribers that I have. But of course a well made video doesn't hurt your subscriber count either. I hope you found this video useful and I hope I didn't sound like a smart ass. And hopefully I didn't just state the obvious. Now you know all my secrets. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye.